In this video I'll be taking a look inside a Dell Latitude 5490 and showing you how to replace the keyboard. If you look above the number 3, the British pound symbol is missing and is instead replaced by a hash symbol, which interestingly can also be referred to as a pound symbol. But it's not the pound symbol I'm looking for, so I'm going to be replacing this keyboard with a UK model. So the first thing you'll need to do is turn the laptop over and take out the 8 screws holding the rear panel to the rest of the laptop. These screws do have an unthreaded section at the top. So if you're having trouble getting them out, be sure to put some upwards pressure on the screw as you're trying to unscrew it. Using a spudger, you want to gently pry apart the rear panel from the rest of the laptop and work your way around the outside of the laptop. Be sure to take your time when doing this so you don't cause any damage. With the laptop open, let's take this opportunity to take a quick look inside. At the front of the machine, we'll find the rather large 68 watt hour battery. The Latitude line of laptops do tend to come with larger batteries when compared with, say, the Inspiron laptops, which tend to use 42 watt hour batteries. Just above the battery, you'll find two slots for DDR4 laptop RAM sticks. The RAM in this laptop is fully upgradable with a single 8GB model fitted to this particular machine out of the factory. The CPU supports up to 32GB of RAM, so it's possible to upgrade this machine with two 16GB sticks in the future. Running in dual channel mode, you might see a slight performance improvement running two smaller sticks of RAM as opposed to one larger stick. On the right hand side we have the full size SD card slot, a USB port, and a USB Type-C port. The USB Type-C port can be used for charging, although the included charger does not use this. The standard charging port can be found just next to the USB Type-C port and is connected to the board through a cable. This should make this part more replaceable in future, if necessary. An interesting feature of this laptop, which hints at its business credentials, is the SIM card slot which can be found on the back of the machine. With an appropriate network card installed, it's possible to use a SIM card to connect to mobile networks, allowing the device to connect to the internet on the go. As you can see, in this machine the required card is not fitted. What is populated though is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. In the bottom left corner on this particular machine we see an M.2 SSD. There are variants of this laptop which come with traditional 2.5 inch drives so you might find a drive caddy in this area rather than a bare card as we find in this machine. The M.2 port supports both SATA and NVMe SSDs with this machine being populated with a SATA drive. So that's a basic overview of the inside of the machine, so let's get back to what I actually opened it up for, which is changing that keyboard. The next thing you'll need to do is unplug the battery, which you can do using the little tab on top of the connector. Next, remove the screw on the right hand side and you should be able to start lifting the battery out. Just bear in mind there are a couple of tabs in the bottom right corner of the battery, so you'll want to start lifting from the top or from the left. From here you can undo the four cables which go to the keyboard. If you've got a slightly different variant of the keyboard, you might not have all four cables to disconnect, so just disconnect whichever ones you have. Now 
that's everything we need to do inside the device so now you can flip it back over and start working on the keyboard now we need to remove the keyboard frame you'll see there are two little notches one between F3 and F4 the other between F11 and F12 and you'll want to get a little spudger in, into that gap to start releasing the clips put the frame to one side and you'll now be able to access the five screws that hold the keyboard in place With the screws removed, try and gently release the clips on either side of the keyboard as this should allow you to lift the keyboard up from the bottom. There are five tabs along the top of the keyboard that slot underneath the case so this is why you need to lift it up from the side closest to you. With the old keyboard removed, it's time to put in the replacement. So here's the replacement keyboard I'll be installing and the first thing you want to do to get this in is to route the cables through the little slot in the bottom of the case and then tilt the keyboard so those five tabs along the top slot under the top edge of the case. Push down on the sides to make sure that it's clipped back in place. Now it's just a case of reversing the steps that we took to take the thing apart starting with the screws. Once the screws are in place you can put the frame back over the keyboard. Bear in mind that if you're replacing the keyboard from a different region you will need a frame that matches the new keyboard. In my case I've replaced a US keyboard with a UK one so the frame I'm putting back on is different to the one that I took off. And yes the new frame does have the wrong model number on it but that's purely cosmetic it's functionally exactly the same. As well as the clips either side of the frame, be sure to press down in between some of the keys because there are clips in the middle of the frame as well. If there's a section that doesn't look right, press down in the area as there's likely a clip that needs to be pushed in. Once you're happy with the frame, flip the laptop over and plug the keyboard cables back into the machine. Once the keyboard's plugged in, it's literally just a case of reversing the steps we did to get the laptop apart, starting by putting the battery in, replacing the rear cover and screwing it all together. So that was a quick look inside a Dell Latitude 5490 and showing you how you can replace the keyboard. I hope you like this video, thank you very much for watching and be sure to stick around for the next one.